Heavenly Father, we, your children, give you thanks for this day. We assemble ourselves together face to face and via Zoom. Strengthen us, Father. We pray this morning for truth, loyalty, and honesty. You allow us to go to bed last night. God, this morning you have given us the breath of life. And for that, we are thankful. We are so grateful to see the sunshine. Oh, it's a privilege just one more time. Dear persons, dear Heavenly Father, who I left on the ward yesterday, but ask for them right now. They are hushing them. But Father, we thank you that you allowed us just one more time. And for that, God, oh, Jesus, you are so grateful. Bless your name, Jesus. We just thank you. We just honor you for just being so good to us. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning is taken from the words, chapter 3, beginning at the fifth verse on to the sixth verse. And it reads thus, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Verse 6, in all thy ways Acknowledge him, and he shall, he shall direct thy paths. Amen. Since this morning, the scripture is so timely. But before I go on, I should say with my short message, I would like to first to give respect to the Father who is the head of our life. To our Father who has allowed us to get apart, put on our clothes, and come into the house just one more time. <laughs> Since you don't know how grateful we are just to be sitting in the benches. I attended a funeral yesterday. And I read and I looked at the gentleman who was in the pocket. He couldn't say anything. So this morning when I got up, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's a privilege. And to a pastor... Lady Lisa, I give to God thanks for y'all. I'm thankful for, for having y'all as a leader. Pastor LJ, Sister Camille, Pastor Leroy, Sister Tash, deacons, deaconess, my brothers and my sisters, and visitors via Zoom. Last but not least, my husband of soon to be in a, just about seven months, 39 years. <laughs> we must give respect and thanks. My children, John, Janique, and Janelle. Janelle, who's on Zoom in Nassau, and little Lamani, thank God for y'all. God is a great God. 
my brothers and sisters, regardless this morning, I say regardless what you are faced with this morning, pray for me while I, while I speak the word. And my topic is this morning, trust. Subtopic. Trust in God continuously. Can I just say that one more time? Trust in God continuously. I want to encourage each of you. Don't look at me this morning. But listen to the word. And when you're finished listening to the word, just apply it to your heart. What is for you, you take. And I'm going to take what is mine. Amen? Amen. And it will be just a moment in front of you. Then I'll be right out of your way. I did a research on the word trust. And what it really is. We as members of the body of Christ, we all have different views. And it's defined trust in different ways or however you see it. But I have come by this morning to tell you how trust is to me. I'm speaking. And when I looked, I had a few books. And I looked through. It might, the words might just curve a little differently. But when you look at it, it remains the same. Are you hearing me? I see on Wednesday after Wednesday, I mightn't say anything, but I'm listening. As we come on, and Brother Trevor speak on trust and as we come on via zoom whatever you say dealing with trust we put it together and we work from there but i found that trust for me is to rely on integrity trust is strength ability of a person or thing the greatest of all, I saw that trust is having confidence or hope. Now, we might say a thing, but what I'm going to really be talking about, I'm not going to be talking about trust in a human being. Because to me, it's a little, it's a little floppy, I should say. Shall I, may I use that for a word? But when you trust in Jesus, it's a different format. It's a different format. When I sat down, this, that was yesterday, and I started to just, just go over what trust is to me. All of a sudden, I just hear those words, just, it just keep on coming, keep on coming. He said, to trust in the Lord is to put all the problems on him. I can't put my problems on Pastor Nose. All that is going to do is to carry him down. But I got to put my trust in the man called Jesus. For he is a problem solver. I heard someone said that he is a healer. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is great. I am. Heard somebody else say, he is the rock, my shelter, my deliverer. He is the great. I am. I heard a sister always say this, Sister Bill. He is my shield in the middle of God. He is the middle of the wheel. 
That who I trust in. That's who I trust in. My brothers and my sisters, there are different levels of trust. Like I said earlier, you can't trust in human beings. I always say, my husband, as much as I love him for nearly 39 years, He will say, Virgie, I'm going to do this. But when your back is turned, <laughs> what he said to me already, finished. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Especially the ladies. I see I'll go to work and I think that John is home, probably have, cooking a nice meal when I listen. He is somewhere up in Fortune Bay fishing. <laughs> so you see, you understand what I'm trying to place that trust. But I came by to let you know this morning the God who we serve when we say, God, this, he gave us this. He honor his word. He is a dependable. He is capable. Can I hear somebody say he is powerful? He is trustworthy. He is an excellent keeper. Oh, and he is unchangeable. Can I say that with my spouse? No. I can never say that. I'm using him just to let you all see. I can never say that in my number of years that he is all powerful. He is all unchangeable. No. Trust God. To make a change in your life. Faithful in all your doings. In all your ways. In all your ways. Acknowledge some. Acknowledge some. No. Acknowledge all. And when you do that, you could just walk straight. Because guess what? He's directing your path. You will not fall. You will not fall. I'm nearly ready to sit down. But before I sit, there are also some principles we must follow. And that is the word. We must follow the word. God honors his word. He performs his work. Once he say he will do it, Don't worry about the time. You may ask him this moment. But it mightn't happen until next year. But don't worry. He's going to do it. He will do it. So I ask you today just to trust him. No matter what the deal, trust him. Everything, everything will come to pass. He is an awesome God. Do you believe me this morning? But saints, I really can't sit until I give you this testimony. Because this is a testimony I'm saying to you, it can help somebody. You know, I have my son, JJ. He finished school last week, Friday. But when I asked him what he want to be, wow, he want to, oh boy, he want to be a surgeon. So I said to my husband, that called for a lot of, a lot of, some people said, though, a lot of money. But can I just tell you that God is a hearing God? 
Can I just tell you that he is the person that nobody else needs to trust for you, but you need to trust in him yourself? The testimony go on to say, my husband and I sit down. And we said, whatever we have, we got to, you know, give him his, that's our last baby. But when we look at it, you know, what we had was it even scraping, you ever hear on Long Island Pass, was scraping the bucket? That was not sufficient. But oh, when the bank here, but government employees, they love that. What, what the question was, how much do you want? But I say to myself, and I'm not going to lie to you. I had a little doubt. You know that kind of way? That kind of way? I'm going, but yet I still doubting. I'm trusting God, but in the back of my mind, I'm still doubting. And all I'm saying, I want to give him, I want to assist him. God is faithful. God is faithful. JJ even didn't say to me that he didn't say that he was full of no different forms. So one day when he came to us, the, the loan is still going through. But he said to us, he was talking this stuff, what he had to answer on this. Um, they, they had a Martin Luther King Foundation Scholarship Award. And he said all these uh, American stuff they was asking him, if I should say. Not for him, because I remember his daddy saying to him, why they didn't ask you but Mr. Lyndon Penlinden though? But they were focusing on, I can't even start to say because he reads all the time. So he was saying, mommy, I did this and I did that. So I look at my husband and I say, boy, the way how he talking, it sounds like something is happening. But can I just tell you, can I just tell you, we waited and we waited. And when we saw that there was Monday gone, Tuesday gone, Wednesday gone, Thursday gone, then it was only one more day before the weekend was over. I remember my son saying to me, Mommy, they must be not going to call me. But little did we know. In the matter of just minutes, he came back and he said, Mommy, Mr. Algernon and Cargill called me. And he said, he want, he, um, he, want, he want us to put you on the flight for Saturday morning. So I said, it got to be something in there. It got to be something going on. But do you believe still in the back of your mind, you are still doubting? Because you know what I go on and do? I still go on and call Mrs. Knowles from the bank. And I said to her, I said, how is things going on? You don't worry about it. It's going to be straight. But why are you taking so long? It ain't like you are stealing something. I'm going to be paying back. But oh, God, hear my prayer. God, hear my prayer. I dropped JJ to, to the airport on Saturday morning. It was scheduled for, the honorary service was scheduled for Sunday 1 o'clock. Saints, my brothers and sisters, can you just hear me? It was when we, when we start to, we start to listen to the radio. You know, it was on Saturday 13. And I saw everybody going up. I said to my husband, I say, look here, they're taking long to call JJ. Because, you know, you have that doubt, and yet you still. Oh, little did I know. Little did I know when I hear they say, we now have a full scholarship, everything paid for. And when they said that, I even didn't hear his name as yet. But I heard when they say, Tabernacle Baptist Academy. And when they said that, I look at Sean, I said, I gotta be JJ. 
And do you believe? Not even the only thing. JJ, when he came back, he said, Mommy, the only thing that you have to pay for. But I think they really want you to pay that just to let you see. You can pay something. He said it's $150. But I thought to myself, I said, I said to JJ, even when he was filling out all his visa and stuff, I say, but I wonder how much they are giving you. You know what I mean? It's only $150 we got to pay. Because I won't know. So I said, you ain't a problem. I can send a little $20 for you to have in your pocket. He said, no, mommy. You got to send more. I said, no problem. I will see. But when he opened that thing. I wonder. I wonder. If you only. If you only. Trust. In God, I see how important it is. Because right now, it's, over, it's just over 200,000. So you know it only comes. And just to say a little, I look at him. I, I mean, the other day, his daddy say, JJ, you know, because um, I don't want to say, but I know, you know, he handles, he handles the fork, you know, quite a bit. He eats quite a bit. So, so his daddy say, it's the food included. <laughs> so just the other day, just by saying that, when I look, they had a six, six different meal plan. They sent the, just last week, and they asked him, which one do you want? You know that only could. <laughs> All I could have done looked at him. I said, JJ, please, when they ask you that, they don't mean that you miss on it. <laughs> but with that, then he looked at me and said, Mommy, look at this. They send them out of form, and it's saying that if you don't want what is on the, on the, in the, you know, like um, what's in the cafeteria, there is a subway. There is several other places over there, and so we're going to give you allowance to go to those different stores, different times when you want to go. Things tell me that. That is God. And I came by to tell you this morning, when you trust. But after all of that, after all of that, when the lady, she, frick, she frickly find a pen then to call me, or the phone to call me. And she said, um, are you still going with it? <laughs> I said, no, ma'am. So she said, what happened? I said, the Lord that I serve, I have trust in, who is all powerful, who is all dependable, who is all capable, who is unchangeable. He worked out for us. She stood right in the front of me and she just looked. I mean, after when I went to see her because I didn't need to. I gotta get my stuff back. You understand me and the stuff that you carry. I'm telling you, that could help somebody. Better by a Zoom or face to face. Keep trusting. Keep trusting. Just keep trusting. And things as I looked down, that was not only the story, but us, but but David and Goliath. You remember the story? I'm not gonna go through it. But y'all remember the story? They, Goliath was a big guy. And David was what? But guess what he could have done? Only because he trusted in God. You remember Daniel? In the lion's den. 
All of those lions I made, but what happened? Their jaws were locked. He trusted in God. Abraham. He didn't have no children. But yet what happened? He was blessed. And to bring that on to me, I said this morning while I was putting a little notes to it, I said, last but not least, I'm reminded of myself. When I trusted in God, I didn't have one child. Twelve years gone. But I trusted how much I have now. I'm not bragging, saints. I'm, I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging, but I just feel within myself it can be of great use. You know, it can help somebody. It can help you. We all need to have that confidence and insurance as we reach out to God with our struggles. He has a plan no matter what. He put together, God has already planned it out. Whatever he decides to happen will be for our very own being. If our questions are not answered, like I said earlier, in a timely manner, there's a sign that says, wait. Wait. Wait on God. Wait. I have a little diary. I think I got from um, Sister Norris. Give me years ago. A little women's diary. He said, instead of jumping into judgment, I took a little a portion out and worry. We are to rest in God by keeping our trust in his infinite grace. Psalms 9, 9 to 10. The Lord is my refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in the times of trouble. Then further down, Psalms 34 and 10. Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Then to Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Those of steadfast mind you keep in peace because they trust in you. We are to trust in the Lord. For in Lord God, you have an everlasting rock. A song I always hear which says, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you. How I prove, have you proved them over and over? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace, oh, for grace to trust him more. This morning, as I'm about to conclude, I say to each of you, no matter what's the problem, no matter what you are going through, trust God. No matter what your diagnosis is, you better trust God. He is your healer. He is the one for you to look to. And when he have done all that he can, you can look up and say, he was, he is a righteous God. He is a holy God. He is a merciful God. He is an awesome God. Can I just say he is? A just God. He is a forgiving God. He is our almighty creator. An everlasting God. He is our king. He is everything to us. 
to sing this morning. As I'm about to take my seat, I want you to keep keeping on. For the God you trust. A song was, that was sang this morning. Miracle waker. Promise keeper. You might think that everything is dark in the front of you. But he is light in the darkness. My God. I said, my God. My God. My God. My God. That is who I am. 